It is a cold and windy spring day, a perfect time for indoor activities such as experimenting with cardoons. So this is one of my cardoon plants. This is an unnamed varietal I got from a friend years ago, and it has been gleefully growing down here without irrigation, just doing its Mediterranean thing. Cardoons are, a t are cousins to the artichokes, but we eat them for the stems instead of the flower heads. You can see down here all of these stems, almost kind of like celery. These have been growing naturally with lots of sunlight, so they're bright green. These others over here I blanched earlier in the year, which is I tied them up there either with burlap or a string, just kind of excluding sunlight. And that means that they won't produce chlorophyll and they're supposed to be a little bit more delicate in flavor. And then back here are some baby cardoons that hopefully will be a perfect time for this fall and winter harvests. Let's go inside. It's cold out here. I brought these over into my potting bench that is a protected area out of the wind and rain and I wanted to do an initial preparation of these outside just in case there was a mess and it looked like there's a high mess potential. Uh, this is the one that was underneath burlap um, and you can tell that it is a little bit whiter, lighter color. Um, there's a bunch of dead leaves in here and then there was a bunch of sow bugs. I'm really glad I did this initial prep outside. Um, but nice strong white straight stems. So we'll see how those cook up. I'm probably going to cut it off here and only bring in this bottom part. There's no need to bring in all of this leafy bits up here. And then this is the other one back here that I tied. And I have already cut it off at the point that where it was tied. I'm going to just put those straight into the compost and bring this stuff in here. Probably pulling off some of these larger, more green leaves. And this was really interesting that there's this kind of slight curve to it. Oftentimes in the paintings in the late 1500s, you'll see cardoons pictured with a very strong curve. I'm growing some this year called Hunchback that are known to have a curved arch to it. And so I'm curious to see if there's going to be a taste difference between that named curved varietal and then this generic one that I inherited from a friend. So here's what remains of the cardoons. Uh, this is a pile of stuff that's going to go straight on the compost. I didn't select them to cook because they were bigger and had this hollow core or some of them were smaller and they were more leaf than stem because they were on the inside of the cardoon bundle. And then those that I did select, I went ahead and just boiled them up and thankfully in the anonymous Andalusian cookbook from the 13th century, there is a lovely easy treatment for cardoons. Oftentimes you'll see that you want to peel these or do some other kind of intensive treatment before cooking. This one was simply to wash the cardoons, boil, and then cut them up small before you continue on with the recipe. The beginning of the recipe talks about taking meat and to cut it up, put it in a pot with water, salt, murray, vinegar, oil, pepper, caraway, and coriander seed, and then you cook it for a while which is what I did here. And then the rest of the recipe goes on uh, to talk about taking the cardoons to cut them up small, put it on top of the meat in the pot, boil it, and then top that off with breadcrumbs and eggs all mixed together. So right now the cardoons taste really fun. They kind of are reminiscent um, both in taste and texture to the bottom of an artichoke but it has a slight bit of bitterness, which I've been told can be alleviated by the actual peeling of the cardoon process. But based on the flavors that are going on with the meat, I don't think we need to worry about that because these are really potent flavors. And here we have it. Ta-da! Oh, it looks pretty. It smells really nice. You can really smell the soy sauce. I might've used a little too much on that. And then I may have put in too many breadcrumbs, and so it didn't really pour over. I just glopped it on like dumplings. So let's dish some up and see what okay, it tastes so like. Taste test time. A little bowl full of the mix of dumplings, cardoons, and beef. And again, this is preparing a dish with cardoons and meat based on the 13th century Andalusian cookbook. Uh, the recipe is available on medievalcookery.com. And yeah, let's see what happens. Get some of the cardoons and a little bit of meat and a little bit of dumpling. Wow, that's really fun. So you still get the nice artichoke flavor. 
um, with the cardoons. And the, the cardoons still have a really nice texture to them. I figured they were going to turn just to complete slime with all of that cooking, but they're doing really, really well. Um, they're holding up. They're nice, firm, but not too crunchy. And then um, maybe use a better cut of meat or cook it longer next time. And otherwise, it's a nice, balanced meal. That's really nice. Uh, would I eat this all the time? No, not really. But I think um, in the winter, this would be a nice hearty meal. And that pairs perfectly with when cardoons are in season, at least here in Oregon. Uh, February and January are like the perfect times to harvest them and eat them before they get too big and wonky and turn into bumblebee food. So yeah, I look forward to trying this again next year. So I hope all is well. Bye-bye.